Yeah, my name is Michael Coggin. I'm actually one of the pastors here at GBR and the director of Caris uh, Counseling Services. And it's great to be with you, even though it's virtually. I'd love to see your faces as we were talking on Sunday. We definitely miss you guys. I love you and I'm praying for you. And it's just interesting, you know, wanted to, to share a little bit with you uh, just the issue of isolation. And it was actually something that I had been thinking about, Sharon and I had been talking about uh, just the past few weeks, even before I would say this forced uh, stillness was thrust upon all of us. And, you know, it was really interesting. We were uh, actually last Saturday, it was pretty, the sun was out. So we're like, we gotta get the kids outside and went to Brevard and on a hike. And it was just so interesting to see uh, all these people out and people we had never met before and everyone wanting to you know, make eye contact and engage and say hello. And you know, we were just almost laughing because one, it was enjoyable, but two, just so different than the normal pace and rhythm, uh, I would say of our lives before uh, just the events of the past few weeks. But I think in that, just such a picture uh, of what I wanted to kind of talk about briefly today, just that we were made for relationship and just the reality that, you know, isolation really is, is dehumanizing. And just to kind of talk through that a little bit, uh, I came across this article, Glenn Honberg on Gospel Coalition, where he addresses isolation and wanted to share a few things uh, from that article as well. Uh, but even just, you know, some research that's coming out uh, just as far as how, um, you know, forced isolation, even within the, the prison system that they're rethinking, even that, you know, in one sense being cruel and unusual punishment. And, you know, he talks about in this article, you know, for long distance sailors, um, the soul destroying loneliness of those long voyages, or, you know, for those who are, you know, over maybe 40s or 50s, uh, remembering uh, hostage Terry Anderson, the journalist, and his comment was, I would rather have had the worst companion than no companion at all. And even former presidential candidate John McCain, uh, who talked about solitary confinement when he was a, a prisoner of war uh, during the Vietnam War, where he said, uh, it crushes your spirit and weakens your resistance more effectively than any other form of mistreatment. And, you know, what we have even found today just uh, in scientific research is, you know, you've examined you know, even some of the brain waves of, of people who've experienced extreme isolation, um, that it's comparable to individuals who've had significant head injuries. And so for us as believers, uh, we know some of the reasons why that is. And for us as God's people to, to, you know, be reminded of that in this season of forced stillness and also forced isolation, that, you know, we are made for relationship, that we are relational beings and we bear God's image. That's a doctrine that we've talked a lot about in sermons. I've appreciated Chaz speaking to that in sermons, but also in Sunday school classes and small group lessons, the significance of the doctrine of Imago Day, And that's something that, you know, in a lot of ways, the modern church is kind of um, really not focused on as much, but something that we as a church really need to emphasize and the importance of that, that when we talk about community, that it's not just uh, a catchphrase or a buzzword as we talk about community or church family, um, that we are made for relationship, that Imago, uh, Imago Day means that, um, you know, when God made human beings, he said, let us make man in our image. And so even within the Godhead, there is community. Uh, there is relating that has been going on for all of eternity. And so for us to, um, in this season, um, be mindful that it's not, um, it, you know, us being indulgent or too needy to have feelings of sadness uh, feelings of anxiety or depression, um, you know, just from this isolation that we're all going through right now. And so I would want to share with you that, you know, as we think about this, it really is this opportunity for us, um, this opportunity in the midst of affliction, in the midst of suffering, to grow in a deeper understanding of, of the sacrifice that Christ made for his people. Uh, the reality that, that Jesus Christ experienced isolation from his father so that we who are his children would not be isolated from God the Father for eternity. And so in some ways, you know, even though I've known that theologically, even though I've known some of that intellectually, just for you to know, as we've had conversations uh, just on staff and as I've talked to other pastors around the country, 
you know, that's something that has just uh, more meaning and a fullness to that understanding has come more into focus, even for me personally in the past few weeks. And for us not to waste this opportunity to really grow in grace and really grow in our understanding of, you know, what is community? What have we been made for? Uh, I've talked to so many of you on the phone and FaceTime and just um, just the excitement at the thought of being able to worship together, the excitement of being able to uh, take the Lord's Supper together, and that that is something that we should celebrate and be thankful for, the gift of community. And I think in this as well, just for us to remember you know, that we have been reconciled to God the Father by the isolation that Jesus experienced on our behalf. And so in some ways, as we feel the pain and the sadness uh, of that isolation, of the reality of uh, being separated from community, that I think what comes more into focus for us is, you know, what Christ did for us, the depth of love that he has for us, who are his objects of his affection, his children. And so I'd want to share with you, just even as a pastor, as a counselor, um, that you're not being too needy or it's not too much if you I need to reach out and, and ask for help. If you need to say, hey, I'm really struggling, um, you know, not only relationally, emotionally, spiritually, that we would see it as a privilege uh, to talk with you, to, to care for you, to love you. Um, I think also for us to, to realize, and it's something, you know, we did the, the class on prayer uh, several months ago. Um, I think it's something in the West and in our tradition, especially uh, in American culture where we feel uh, like we want to be productive, we want to do things, we very much are about doing. And this forced stillness in some ways makes us feel like, okay, I'm not doing enough. This is really passive. Uh, but just for us to remember the power of prayer, uh, the reality that there's something quite significant to our prayers for other brothers and sisters in Christ, not only within our own community, but brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. And so for us not to minimize the power of prayer um, and just communion with God the Father and praying for um, you know, others in our community who are, who are also struggling. And I think that's one of the things for us to remember in this season that we have an enemy that's not creative and he wants us to uh, believe the lie that we're alone and to go to despair and to dehumanize us in that isolation but for all of us to remember that we're not alone, that, that God is with us, that God's word is clear in Psalm 34, that he is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And for us as God's people to really rest in that, to uh, be encouraged by that. You know, we talked about this um, last Sunday that, you know, Hebrews 12 is really clear that for the race that has been set before us, for us to fix our eyes on Christ, and for us to remember and, and really realize that this is the race that has been set before us. And this is not something that has surprised God our Father. Uh, it's not something um, that he is far off or distant, even though the enemy wants us to believe that. But for us to fix our eyes on Jesus, to not uh, be driven by fear or anxiety, uh, but to be able to rest in the knowledge and truth of Christ's love for us as his people. And then also just wanting to share, too, just... And we've talked about this over the years, just the, the uh, real value in counseling. Um, one of the things that, you know, we've been really thankful for over the years is being able to uh, care for people who are not able to leave their home and provide care through online counseling. And that's something that we're able to do uh, here at Caris Counseling Services and to be a resource uh, to those who are maybe struggling with feelings of depression or sadness or things that are kind of coming more uh, to the surface. And so really wanting to mention that as a real option. And so just want to say we love you, uh, we're thankful for you, and just uh, excited at the opportunity to continue to be in community with one another and excited at the opportunity to uh, see each other's faces and to celebrate as God's people, uh, but to know that we are not alone, that we are loved. And so just want to say uh, thank you for this time to, to have this conversation with you.